Welcome back. This is part 14 the SIG Cougar build. And you're probably thinking, oh, he's got another airplane on the on the bench. And yeah, I do. This is a Great Plains Giant Aeromaster. This is built from a kit. And it's a well, I guess it's a, a reconstruction job. <laughs> General restoration. Basically ground up. I bought this from a friend of mine and it was in disrepair it looked good at the time but as i got into it i found uh warped wings um spars that were yeah were marginal so i tore all that stuff out new has new spars planking sheeting new stringers top and bottom uh new ailerons oh let's see what else uh new elevator and rudder and a completely reworked cowl that was an abs cowl and i completely redid it it was set up for a us 41 and now i have a dle 55 in it so i had to fix the holes in the side there would have been a hole on see it would have been the side closest to you for the carburetor and i had to patch all that in i actually did a video on repairing cowls like that and it didn't come out so good so i never uploaded it but i might give you a little snapshot of it here in a little bit oh what can i tell you about this let me give you the the specifications on it real quick oh this is like a cheat sheet but what i use it for it has little pegs at the bottom here and i shove this into the ground next to my plane when i go to static displays or an air show or something and that way i can walk away from it and I don't have to answer questions as much <laughs> everything is right there so here's the specs wingspan is 73.5 inches the length is 63.5 inches the weight of this plane with the radio battery engine is 17.5 uh, pounds the wing area is 1810 10 square inches the wing loading is 24 ounces per square foot and like I said I have a DLE 55 in the nose uh, swinging a 2210 XOR prop the radio I'll be using in this is my Futaba 9 cap and on board is a Futaba 8 channel fast uh, let's see uh, servos has high tech HS 645 MG they're high torque metal gear and once I it used to be covered with Monaco and I stripped all that off and you know, like I said and I completely rebuilt the wings from the ground up and for covering I used this stuff uh, SIG coverall it, it's not an adhesive bag uh, covering it is a uh, fabric basically I'm trying to figure out the best way to explain it but it's a it's a fabric and it's actually heat shrinkable and what you do is you go to SIG and they have a product I can't remember what it's called but you put it on your balsa airframe and then you can iron the cover all on but I didn't do it that way I basically used a silk and dope technique I've been using since I was a kid and put this stuff on I haven't shrunk the fabric at all it's just put on there with uh, with the nitrate dope and once it was on I doped the whole thing it shrunk it up tight I mean it is very tight very tight very strong too very durable uh, let's see for paint I use glass coat paint epoxy it's all sprayed all the insignia like uh, the star on the wing uh, the numbers on the side the tail stripes uh, all that stuff is painted on the colors this is a yellow that I mix by hand I started with the primary yellow color and mixed in some red and a little black <clears throat> excuse me and a little bit of white give it a little grayish tint to it 
brought it close to like an insignia yellow or a navy yellow or something along those lines uh, the blue I mixed the blue and the red and the white isn't really white I had to knock that off of the brilliant white that it was to a uh, more of a grayish white but it looks white that's that's the main thing uh, the aluminum color on it the silver that comes right out of the can and is flattened with uh, the, the catalyst has a flat catalyst or a semi-gloss that's what it is a semi-gloss catalyst and I sprayed the whole thing that way with a semi-gloss uh, the black isn't really black either it started out as black but it's been knocked off of black to look more like a full-scale airplane black same with the numbers on the side you probably notice there's some damage on the lower wing towards the leading edge on the wingtip well that happened when I was just finishing up the plane I just got it sprayed and it sat 24 hours out in the garage and I got this little fairly narrow stainless steel table that I use when I paint and I was putting the struts on and I was walking around it checking it out looking for flaws and I hit this wing tip right here with <laughs> right about here on my chest and it spun that plane right off the table and I I went and grabbed the rudder by the time I grabbed the rudder that wing tip hit the ground and busted up the corner and actually broke a, a, one of the stringers down here so I have to repair this thing before I even get to fly it so that's just the way it goes okay what else uh, let's see on the bottom you can't see it but it has a uh, US Army on the bottom and let's see cockpit wise has a new canopy I bought the canopy it's, a, it's still available from uh, fiberglass specialties has a Williams Brothers pilot in it um, it's approximately one-fifth scale I'm not really sure the inch size it has a instrument panel that I made uh, the instruments themselves I had to make along with the little bezels and the ring and it has a needle in there uh, I'll give you a close-up of it right right now in a matter of fact uh, let's see what else can I tell you about it the black inside is a flat black the the in uh, the deck inside the canopy is a green that they use in British aircraft it's like a seafoam green or something like that and in front of the canopy are a set of one-fifth scale Williams Brothers uh, machine guns they're uh, the Vickers and let me see oh now we'll go back to the tail wheel the tail wheel the way it's set up and functions is something I just made up off the top of my head it has let me find it on here um, it's made up of a 256 rod a couple of pieces of uh, brass and the oh the part the rods that go down to the steerable tail wheel that is uh, just 256 uh, threaded rod with ball links on the end and the bell crank you can probably see that in the picture it is brass also I made that and it's all soldered onto the the, the tail wheel assembly and that's how that works elevators a push-pull solid rod 440 uh, there's two servos one for each elevator the rudder is a pull-pull cable system and that has a single servo ailerons are one servo per side the top airlon as you can see is operated by the strut that comes off of the back of the aileron there isn't much else to tell you about a couple more things uh, you can see the switches on the side the one in the back is for the receiver and the one in the front is the ignition uh, in front of that you probably see some small writing just behind the cowl on the side of the fuselage uh, I'll give you a close-up here and 
that is basically the stuff they put on the side of the aircraft in the late 30s i know it's crooked okay the top couple few lines are crooked and the ones below aren't much better but hey what can i say i was in a hurry and i didn't feel like rubbing it all off and doing it again so uh but in that i've hidden my here in the stage so everybody knows that you got to have your ama number on there so that's hidden in there and now you haven't have to have an faa number also so that's hidden on there so that takes care of some of the requirements um let's see what else uh i guess that is just about it yep it has a pit style muffler on it that's pretty obvious uh the choke system it's just a pull thing um you can probably see it right here pull for choke push in take choke off nothing special about that it's a bell crank wire system works really well okay i guess that is it so what i'm going to do now is take this apart it's going to take me about 15 minutes to take it apart and put it away uh but in the meantime i'm going to play the intro and when we come back i'll start setting up the vertical stabilizer the turtle deck and the canopy and the canopy is not going to be glued on right away because i can i have to set up a cockpit basically like the aeromaster with the instrument panel the pilot headrest things like that so i probably won't put the canopy on solidly or permanently glued on until after i fiberglass the model so let me run the intro and we'll get to it kits i think are the way to go because you don't have that cookie cut actually fiberglassing painting uh, as you roll it forward, you kind of press it like this. As hard as a brick bat for leaving One edge. last thing on tip blocks is that you want to cut outside Welcome the line. Welcome to Sick Cougar Build Part 8. The Bombers. We are on step 29 in the manual. The the back. This is part 9 of Sick Cougar Build. This is a Sick Cobra. It's the 20 size version of the Cougar. Well, the Aeromaster is taken apart and put away. And uh, something occurred to me as I was putting it away that I forgot to mention, or I should have mentioned since I brought it up, and that was the stenciling in the front that were not so straight. Well, I didn't tell you too much about that, so I'm going to do that real quick. And what I use these little rub-on letters, uh, it says they're 16th inch and 8th inch on one sheet. You can buy these at uh, better craft stores and basically all you do is you line them up and you just burnish them on with a popsicle stick or something along those lines and I have like I said the 16th and 8th inch and quarter inch and the manufacturer of these is called headline but I'm sure there's other ones out there that are just as good and once you put these on and you cover them up, let's say you put them on your your ARF or something and you want it to stay permanently, just put some clear Monaco over the top and it should stay forever. And if you're on painted surfaces, uh, whatever clear you happen to have, polyurethane or whatever, epoxy, it'll keep them on there and they'll, they'll never run off or uh, rub off or anything like that. All right, I'm going to put these away. Be right back. The Cougar's on the bench. I have already done a little bit of work. I hinged the rudder, and we went over that on the air lines, but let me kind of give you a refresher here. Let me pull this apart. And in the previous video when we were doing the ailerons, I showed you how to uh, mark and pin the center so you can make your lines basically what I did I spaced my hinges same as the airline hinges and uh, 
I have one in the center and one at the top. I left the third one out and there's a reason for that. I use this deal. This is a, uh, oh, it's a hinge slotting tool. And it's to make the, the initial cut into the slot. I don't know if you can see the slot, it's kind of small. And you jam that onto your center line, push it in. I put the tape on here to mark the depth, the depth of one side of the hinge. That way I'm not gonna go blistering through the wood too far and or possibly come out the side. That that's annoying when you do that. I've done that before. I did the two. Got them slotted. I did the rudder the same way. And the rudder I already already sanded the bevel in it. And the way I do that to sand the bevel is I'll just take a T-bar leave the hinges in there and roll it off the hinge until I, I touch the balsa wood like so and just start cutting the cutting the angle in and when you start hearing hearing that sound of the sandpaper hitting the hinge then you know know you've gone as far as you should go and you do that on both sides and that gives you the angle that you need to get a full rotation of your rudder. You don't need to sand the whole thing round. That's just a waste of energy. Just need that bevel in there so you can see. Now let me face it forward. You can see the deflection is, is real good. You got a lot, lot of deflection there. If you want more than that, then I think you're probably getting, you're giving yourself too much, but it's up to you. If you want more of a, a travel on it, just put in more of an angle. And I'm going to sand that little, this edge right here, kind of round that off um, just before I cover it with uh, fiberglass, which I'm probably going to do here in a little bit. I'll cover the rudder and fiberglass, get that ready and pin the hinges. So that's done. And now for the reason I left the third and final hinge out of that is I'm not going to do it by the book. The book says three hinges, glue it on. And the ugliest part of the whole deal is you need to cut or pop a hole somewhere up in here for your push rod. Well, I don't like my push rods or coming through the side of my fuselage and I don't care to see horns on the outside of my airplanes because it's, it, it's just ugly. It's more drag. It's not, if you know how to do it, it's not necessary on a lot of airplanes. Some of them you have no other choice but to have the horns on the outside and the servo arms dangling through. Uh, but in this case, you can get away with a little bit and make your rudder uh, horn inside the plane and what I do is this right here this is out of the old cougar that I showed you and what this does is this little piece well this is a push rod of course and this part of the hinge or I guess you call it a hinge it's like on a tail wheel some tail wheels will mount into the back of the fuselage and stick down but this one is set up as a tool for my rudder so it will look like let me see if I can get this right this is backwards but you'll get the idea it'll sit in there something like that okay with the wire facing into the rudder the hinge part into the fin and this will be mounted on the inside so it'll be something like that <laughs> let me get this right so it'll actuate like this uh, can you see that maybe not it's it's kind of small now this is kind of a close-up of it this is the part that goes into the rudder comes down goes uh, through the 
the little hinge thing that goes into the fin, the vertical fin. And the rest of it sticks below the horizontal stabilizer. That connects to the push rod. And you can see it's kind of a weird looking thing. I'm going to try to turn it. Let's see. Okay, you can see the barrel part right here. And the rod comes through it. And on the end, you can see the little tab in the center. And this is just basically a clevis type yoke with two holes on each side. And it kind of pops on there. And once you got it on, it's a real bugger to get off. That's why I like using it. Okay, enough babbling about that. Um, we have to set up this rudder. I normally don't do it the way the book says. We're on the step, I believe, 87. Let me take a look here. Yep, rear deck and tail assembly. Uh, step 87, solid to tail parts. Fit them together using the sand, using the, using the sanding block. Glue and pin down on wax paper, blah, 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 blah. Sand off the lines, off your fin. Uh, sand to shape the rudder and elevator. Well, the elevator, you don't have to sand to shape because it is already been pre-sanded when back in the day when they first came out with this you had to sand this piece and that took a little time I'm not sure if I'm going to use this because this is really weak I'm not very impressed with that maybe an extra coat of heavy glass might take care of that at least it's straight let's see okay turn the page they basically say to set up uh, install the hinges um, see so attach the controls to the tail surfaces I don't understand why Okay, step 89. Put the wing on the fuselage and check to see if the stabilizer lines up with it. Then pin it in place. Okay. We've already done that because the stabilizer is glued in place. Uh, it goes on to hinging. I'm not worrying about hinging until after the vertical stab is attached. Shape the front part FF so that the plastic turtle deck will fit over it. Well, that will be fun. Because number one, when you glue these dudes onto the side, you will find it extremely difficult to get this into a nice shape. Because you're gonna be banging up against the vertical fin and gouging it and stuff. So I like to cut a little bit of this off first and get the taper, since it's square and it needs to be tapered off back here next to nothing. And you really don't know the taper until you find out your turtle legs taper. So I am still going to go kind of by the book, glue these guys on here and then I will taper them back hopefully they'll come out the same on the bottom I'm going to draw out the angle uh, of the turtle deck so it doesn't look like it's coming back on a nice angle and then balloon out you know that I've seen planes like that and that that's a turn off so let's start with that and take the rudder off. There. Put him off to the side. We don't need that anymore. Not for a while. And we'll glue these two pieces on here. It looks like my rudder developed a slight warp. Oh yeah, right up in here. It's just a little twisted. 
These guys are straight, so the pressure will take that off. To glue those on, again, I'm going to go to my handy dandy segment, which is over here. And grab my pins, which are over here. Oh. And I'll move this fuselage off the table or out of the way. I'll just set it up like this. If it'll stay there, good. Oh, let's see. I don't believe I'll need any wax paper for this. So I'm only going to do one side at a time. So I'm going to pencil this one in approximately where it goes. And the only reason I mark it is so when I put the glue down, I don't flood all over the place, flood the glue up onto uh, parts of the rudder that I want to keep clean or the vertical stabilizer. And usually some oozes out anyways. I like to make it so there's enough glue that it comes out everywhere. But in this case, we don't need a whole lot to come out because it's just going to make it harder to manipulate things. And like before, I set it down, I squish it around, press it down. And as usual, the glue is flowing. And I'm not totally set up here. I don't have my paper towels anywhere to be seen. So give me a second, I'm gonna grab a paper towel. Let's see, where do I start? <laughs> Due to an error on my part, since I'm not quite used to this uh, software I'm using in the camera and coordinating this with that and the other thing. Well, anyways, the overall picture is I lost the first 30 minutes. So I'm stuck going backwards to uh, show you because I can't undo what I just did. That's the biggest problem. If I could undo it and start over again, I would, but I can't because parts have been glued on. But the vertical fin has the two uh, fairings put onto it. The way the, the book wants you to do it is to glue your vertical pin in place and then slide your pieces up to it and match them up to the back of the turtle deck. But I find it's easier to hold the rudder in your hand while you're sanding it and shaping the whole thing. Uh, it, to me, it's a little more accurate. You can do it either way, by the book works or the way I'm gonna do it works. And another thing that was lost in, in the video was the opening up of the back of the turtle deck. <laughs> Not a big deal, but enough to, to drive you crazy. Uh, there's several ways to, to take this out. You can score around the edge with a knife because in the back it's kind of a curvature and you have to come back onto the side a little bit to get past that curve. And it looks like I I'm far enough. I might have to go a little bit further back. I'll just take a sanding block and just knock it back a little bit more, but it doesn't matter because when I get ready to uh, put this all on and stuff and it's glued in place, I'll put a bead of uh, polyester resin and micro balloon around here and feather it all in anyway. So not too big of a deal, but the way I opened it up, uh, I didn't use a knife. I didn't uh, use this, just a sanding block. I used a Dremel tool with a small drum sander on it and started working it in and until it went flush with the edge and then I worked around the, the sides until the bevel disappeared, the roundness. And that, that's how I did that. Not, not a big deal, not hard to do. I just wish that my footage weren't wasn't messed up so I could show you that. But now I have to shape this and what I needed to find out is how far back this piece of plastic is going to go 
onto the balsa wood. And I also need to know what the shape is going to be. So I got to work the shape and the taper all, all at the same time. So what I'm going to do is move the, the fuselage out of the way and I'll work with this right on my bench. That way it's going to be easier to look at it and shape it and all that good stuff. I think I made enough room. And this is what we have to contend with. Uh, I wish you could see this a little better. Maybe a little chunk of paper towel here. We'll contrast it so you can see what I'm talking about. Hope that's a little better. So I need to work this on a little at a time. You can see it's way high in the front of this rudder. So that's gonna have to be cut down. A vertical fin and uh, I'm gonna set this like that give myself a little bit of a angle to work with kind of haphazardly mark this because you want the front of the vertical fin to slide underneath this turtle deck just a little bit. So I'm going to start so where it comes even and I'll work it back. Now the hard part is to get the curvature. And let's see, I don't know if this is going to be heavy enough. No. Let me reach over here and grab this guy. This is 80 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to kind of work it on the line and bring this into some kind of a shape. Okay, I'm going to need to do the same thing to the opposite side. So what I'll do is measure it. And it looks like oh, five eighths of an inch. So I'll mark five eighths of an inch on here. And uh, I come back about, let's see, find a spot that's not dirty on this ruler. And it looks like a eighth of an inch there. So I'll mark an eighth of an inch on here. And I'll just draw a line connecting the dots. It should give me the same angle as this here, so that's not hard to do. And I'm going to kind of coax it into shape. I don't want it to flare when I slide it in, so that's pretty close right there. And now I need to make my, <clears throat> excuse me, make my round uh, contour here. Slowly work that on there. See, I gotta start from right about in there to right about in there to make more of a curve.
This is something you need a little patience. You keep test fitting it and slowly bring it into where you want it. Getting closer all the time. Okay. Now I'm close enough here that I can mark the top. All right. Now I'm going to go to a knife. And I think I will <clears throat> measure it back in just a bit more. Now this doesn't have to be perfect because once you get it to slide on and you glue it and the, let's say the plastic doesn't flare out when you slide it in and you get the rest sanded when you put it all together you can still fill this in and smooth it out and you'll never know it's been negotiated on onto the plane i got more to carve And like I said, it's all patience, just a little at a time. I'll make this score mark. And since my shape is good right here, I'm just going to bring that back. That looks pretty good. Needs to come down a little bit more right in here. I believe I need a new knife. That's better. And this is where you have to be a little bit of an artist. You got to be able to sculpt a little bit to get things to fit. Okay, where am I hanging up at? All right, I can see it. this guy into shape and 
now I need to bring this round top into perspective. So I'm going to chisel at this very gently. Take minute sections off at a time. I'm going to run my knife around it like that. Oh, I expect to have gaps in it. I expect to have to fill it. Because it really doesn't have to be perfect. But of course you make it the best you can. But it doesn't have to be perfect. A little bit more just a little bit a little bit at the top That side fits good, that side not so much, but that's okay, I don't care, because it'll all come out in the end. But it still feels like I have to lift a little bit. on the plastic coat or the plastic turtle deck to get it to go up and over the top. And you want to keep this part you're carving fairly close to the shape because the glue has to hold it on there. So you don't want it too loose. And it doesn't have to be a perfect fit. Right, let's see what we got. Still hanging up somewhere. Okay, a little bit. On the sides, I gotta bring it more around. Okay, let's see what that does. There we go. That's a good fit. So now that I have it on there, I can take my pencil and mark the contour. Something like that. Another thing 
is to get an idea of the angle that this is going to go back and I'm going to work it in little by little start sanding the angle and uh, when it looks like it's just about right and it all flows to the back then that's where I'll stop and to do that I'll have to grab my if I can find it there's my bar sander and uh, what I ought to do is mark these pieces with an angle it's gonna have to come back somewhere in there oops slipped I should get my vise out to hold this piece in place Okay, that gives me a good idea. <clears throat> Let's see if I can cheat. Cheat and hold it still at the same time. There we go. I don't think you can see it, but these are marked with pencil. Now I can start taking some of this off. I'm going to use 80 grit. Knock it down a little bit, at least. And why I do this, I'm going to put the camera on pause. And when I get really close, then I'll come back and show you how I finish it up there it is you can see the, the side that wasn't done and the side that is done and all I did was go after it with some sandpaper um, and finished it off with some 220 went along the edge of it with the sanding bar like so started from here and just kept on going around because once this slid on all I had to do was mark mark the shape and sand it sand it in and now that it's it is uh, in shape I'm gonna mark this side and cut this curvature into it get that curve marked And that'll be the shape after I'm done. So let me get back to uh, sanding and cutting. Maybe I'll show a little bit of, the, bit of the sanding being done. There's really nothing to it, just a matter of patience. I might uh, go after it with a knife and carve a little bit. We'll see how it goes. So give me a second and I'll get the camera straightened around and I'll get started on it. One thing I do that some people might not know about or have never done is I'll take masking tape and I'll lay it right on the edge of where I'm going to sand so I don't mess up my wood. And I'll show you here as soon as I get it laid down. like that you see that tape it's right above the block up against the fin and that just keeps me from gouging into uh, the fin when I'm sanding 
And looking at this, I think I'm going to take some of this off, some of this block off. I'll just uh, carve it down with the knife. Save me some sanding time. And see how far I can go with that. Oh, what's the best way to do this? Probably going to be this way. Just lay it down like that. I'm just going to start shaving it down. I'm not going to take it all the way down. I'm going to take it close to the line. And then I'll sand back to the line. You probably heard that enough <laughs> through the video. And you'll end up carving away a great deal of the material. Let's see, how much more can I go? A bit more. Uh, let's go this way. more in the front here. And the rest I'm going to leave up to the sanding block or the T-bar sander. First I'm going to cut the angle and then I'll go to the, the rounding of the, the top portion of it. I have to replace my sandpaper on my bar. Switch over. This is, uh, see, this is 120. Yeah, 120. It doesn't cut it down as fast, but it does okay. Long ways to go. Switch back to the heavier duty stuff so I can get some material removed a little quicker. That's pretty close right there. They look pretty even. Maybe just a little fine sanding here. There we go. Now, test fit my piece here just to make sure everything is still kosher. I didn't go too far with my sanding. I could probably go a little further, but once I get it into shape and I'll do something different and uh, I guess it's easier to show you when I get to that point and then everything will be fine sanded in, but eventually. Now back to doing the, the contour. Put my tape back. And I have to follow that contour line very closely. Uh, so I'm going to remove some of it with a knife. So I don't have to sand so much. 
making sure I'm staying outside of my line that I drew in the front right here. And I'll take a little bit off that corner all the way down. Now it's very easy to take too much off of this corner when you're when you're grinding like this or whittling. So just be very careful, take a little at a time. And you should be okay. Kind of glancing at the other side to see how far I can go here. Alright. I think I'll put the knife down before I make a mistake. <laughs> now, to stay in that edge, I'm telling you that it's easy to gouge. I just lay my bar on here right up against the fin and start to roll it over as I sand. Take a quick look. Boy, it's getting there pretty quick. I think I'm going to switch my sandpapers, go a little lighter on the paper. A little bit more. Trying to get it down to the line that I drew. Okay, looks like it's really, really close. I'm gonna fine sand it just a little bit. And this is 220. Kind of put the curvature into it. And get the jaggedness off of it. Because there's no way to get a real smooth transition on a curved surface with the T-bar. Okay, Let's see what I got. What do you think? Pretty close? I know it's hard to see. There it is. Looks pretty good. <clears throat> Even the angle going back looks real good. So, when, because the bottom of this is splared out a little bit, it goes out even past the balsa wood, uh, which would have been the quarter inch or whatever they used here. The flare is a little bit more than that. And now for the tricky part. 
This is where I change things up a little bit. Let me clear this off and I can show you what I'm going to do. And according to the book, from the back of or the very front of the stabilizer in the center, right here, you measure back, uh, I believe it was 13 16. So what I do with my book? There it is, way over here. Oh, uh, let's see. Where did it say that? Huh. Oh, there it is. Back of the fin is 13 16 from the front of the elevator. Uh, that's not the elevator, but they're pointing at right here in your book. They're pointing at the front of the stabilizer, the horizontal stabilizer. So 13 16 inches back. I already measured it. I got a black mark. I don't know if you can see that, but it's real small. And that's where it goes. So what I like to do is not just mark the front, I'm the back of the, the fin, I will mark the front. And I've already marked it with a black mark right here. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is, this is not going to be the only piece I glue on. This, this will be glued on, but it's also going to have the turtle deck attached. So it is going to go on in one piece. These will be glued on straight. So when I mark, put this on the mark and put this on the mark and the center line mark, I only have to deal with one piece. I don't have to deal with getting the rudder or the vertical fin straight and then having to jiggle the this round because you might end up with something that looks like that or something like, like that but if you have it all glued together it's going to be straight when you put it on no matter what that's just something i've started doing i don't know on cougar number four <laughs> so that's what we're going to do get this guy out of the way oops oh well. <laughs> things happen okay now I have a line a permanent line on my bench let me get my coffee out of the way and I don't know if you can see it but it's a line that I have drawn on my bench from this end of the bench eight foot the other way and what I'm gonna do is line this up on the line Remember I said to put a mark in the center of your turtleneck? Well, that's there. He'll be on the line. I'll glue the two pieces together, let it dry, and voila, one piece. And then we'll worry about putting on the little gluing strips on the top of the fuselage. Because then we know this is going to be accurate. We know it's gonna, where it's going to be. All we do is set it on there, tape it in place, draw a line around it, and then just on the inside of that line whatever thickness this plastic is uh, it looks like almost a 64th of an inch maybe less inside that line then you glue your strip in there test fit until it goes down because it has to be kind of carved a little bit on an angle so that this will slide over top piece of cake piece of cake so I will get started here I have a somewhere a square like I showed you before it has a notch cut out of it so I can go around the fairing this is for many different airplanes and I'll get that squared up on the line pin it down so it can't move now I'll just glue this dude on here tape it down into place in the front probably a couple pins on the side to hold it in against the fin and I'll let it dry for a while simple okay here we go let's try that 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 should be pretty close probably see it a little better a little more detail I'm going to line up my rudder and pin it to the bench and make sure it's square that's the front and this is just a piece of wax paper just to keep me from gluing it to my bench
There's one good pin. Now I'm gonna, it's gonna take a little finagling to get it exactly where I want it. Okay, the back side's pinned. Front side needs to be moved over. And about to there. And I will check my vertical. Oh, goodness. Don't get much better than that. It's really close. Needs a little bit of a, a wiggle to it. Oh no, that come loose. Okay. When I repin this side, it should straighten everything out. A little bit of pinning to do. Try it again. Good. We'll leave it just like that. We break out the segment. Trusty segment. Another thing I like to do is sand the inside sand the inside of the plastic a little bit. Let me find my sandpaper, whatever I've done with it. Okay. And just uh, rough it up just a little bit. Glue will grab it a little better. Pretty good. Nice and sanded. Now we'll get the glue. I'll put the glue on the inside of the of the turtle deck. We'll let it run down a little bit. And slider on. And I'll get some pins to hold the bottom in place. Right down here. I'm not really worried how straight it is at the moment because that'll come afterwards. Looks pretty good. Now I'll straighten it out. Take my piece of tape. Now straddle it like this, move it over onto the mark, right there, that's very straight. Okay. I like the way that looks. And when this dries, then I can sand all this round flush. It's, it's a little high yet over in here, but it's very close in the front. And what I'll do is I'll just start working it in back in here to get that taper more correct. I 
I'm going to use a little bit of tape to hold it down on the top. I don't want to put too much weight on it, but I don't want it popping up eventually either. So I'll just kind of tape it down on the side like that. Okay, good to go. That's as far as I can go for today and for the time being, because I'm going to go right into, well, I'm going to call it part 14B. And that's going to be mounting this on. It took me a little longer to get to this stage. Uh, we're pushing about an hour. I think the intro was a little long, but I thought it was interesting. And I'll show you guys something different. And the thing that it that does that the Aeromaster in the very beginning has in common with the Cougar is the paint, the cockpit. Uh, there's a few other things that uh, I could probably mention, but it, it'll all come out in the wash. <laughs> so let let me get away from here. Let this dry. I can leave it alone. I'll come back, and we'll just go right into the next part of the build. So until 14B, have a good one. <laughs>